Do you trust a USB thumb drive such as this one? Would you plug it into your computer if I gave it to you or if you picked it up? Zebra, what are we doing today? Hack it. How long does it take for us to take control of a computer? Three. Three seconds, is that all? Mm -hmm. So we're going to show you in this video why you should never, ever just put some random USB stick or thumb drive into your computer. It only takes three seconds, just like in the movie, Mr. Robot. If you found a USB thumb drive, would you plug it into your computer? So as an example, if you found it in the parking lot, would you plug it in to your computer? Or if you picked it up somewhere, would you plug it into your computer? Perhaps you've gone to a computer trade show or some other trade show and they're giving out USB thumb drives. Would you plug this in? It's a really bad idea to plug in unknown USB thumb drives, especially if you just picked it up in the parking lot of your company. Let me show you why it's a really bad idea to do this. This looks just like any normal USB thumb drive, but notice what it's gonna do. I'm running a web server on my Kali Linux or Kali Linux VM here. This could, however, be hosted in the cloud. I'm running a simple web server and I'm running an application called Netcat that allows me to run a reverse shell attack. Notice what happens when I plug this in. I'm gonna plug it in just like any other normal USB thumb drive. Something happened, I don't know if you noticed that, it went very quickly. We saw something happen and then it disappeared. Now literally within a few seconds, I have control of this laptop using this USB thumb drive because what's happened is that computer has opened up a session to my web server and it's downloaded a PowerShell script that allows me to have a reverse shell connection to the laptop. So on my Kali Linux server, if I type who am I, Notice it says Asus Windows 10 David. That's the user on this laptop. I'll move this a bit closer so that you can see that on the camera as well. So I can type a command such as DIR. Can see a bunch of stuff. CD root DIR. This is the directory of the C drive on that computer. I'm viewing the C drive of that computer. Now I can send commands to this computer to get it to do almost anything. So notice what's gonna happen. I'm gonna paste a command into my Kali Linux server. This is Netcat. That's actually got a reverse shell to this laptop. And I'm gonna press enter now. And notice on the laptop, something happens. I'm not touching the laptop. Something happens. I've got it to open up a web browser and browse to my YouTube channel. So just by typing a command within Kali, I've been able to get the laptop to do something. I'll kill that task. So I'm gonna kill Chrome now. Notice Chrome is dead. What I'll do is start Notepad on that laptop. I'm just showing you some basic examples here. I mean, you could get it to do almost anything. Let's kill Notepad. So I'll paste my command in. Notepad is being killed. I'm not touching this laptop, but I'm remotely controlling it. Using a reverse shell, I'm actually running PowerShell in the background on this laptop. And I'll show you that in a moment. Let's have some fun. So what I'll do now is start a web browser and point it to a PNG file that I've found on the internet. So I'm gonna get this to browse to some server on the internet and display a web page. Basically, I've got it to display a blue screen of death. It's not an actual blue screen of death. It's simply a PNG file or a graphics file hosted by a company on the internet. So I'm controlling this laptop and getting it to browse to a website on the internet. Let's kill Chrome again. There it's gone. But notice I'm controlling this laptop. I can get it to do almost anything. As an example, I could get it to create a file so I'll connect to the laptop using remote desktop. What you'll see on the temp directory of this laptop is there's no file there. But what I'm gonna do is create a file 
on that laptop remotely. So I'll paste in something and on the laptop, notice there's a text file and I've written some code to it. So I've been able to remotely create a file on this laptop. Now what's happening in this laptop actually is, and I'll show you this by opening up Task Manager, is I've managed to run PowerShell as a hidden process on the laptop. So PowerShell is running here, but I hid it. So when I started the attack, basically the rubber ducky, and that's what this thumb drive actually is, I programmed this to send commands to the laptop. This is basically emulating a keyboard and sending keystrokes to the computer as if someone had typed it. But it literally only takes a few seconds to run this attack. So I'll kill PowerShell here and I'll just run the attack again. So on my Kali Linux server, I'm running Netcat. Netcat is really powerful software. It allows you to do something like this where I've got a reverse shell connection to a laptop or a device. I'm running a web server. Notice how long this attack takes. It takes a few seconds. Plug this in. Something happens. You see something happening now. There's a connection to Kali that's been done now. So in that short amount of time, I've been able to launch a remote shell to this laptop. So again, back in Kali, if I type, who am I? You can see I'm connected to that laptop. CD root, DRR. You can see the temp directory on the laptop. You can see the other Windows programs on that laptop. And just to make the point once again, I'll start Chrome on that laptop and get to the laptop to go to my YouTube channel. Now this kind of attack works not just with Windows, but with other operating systems as well. So it could also be used to attack a Mac as an example. It's not just a Windows attack. I just use Windows in this example. Don't ever just plug in some USB thumb drive into your computer. In a separate video, which I've linked here and below, I showed you the OMG cable and how I was able to launch attacks using the OMG cable. An OMG cable like this and the USB rubber ducky basically use the same language. You can program them to launch all kinds of attacks. Now in the other video, I showed you how to use the OMG cable to copy all Wi-Fi passwords to a web server. In this example, I've used the USB rubber ducky to do a reverse shell and take control of a laptop. Don't just plug any device into your computer. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please like it. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and please click on the bell to get notifications when I upload a new video. In subsequent videos, I'm gonna show you how to set up the USB rubber ducky. I'll show you all the steps to get this configured with various payloads so that you can launch attacks in a similar way to what I've demonstrated in this video. I'm David Bumble, wanna wish you all the very best. Okay.